Hey bro, what is the difference between a human and an animal? Some people might say there is no difference. Humans are animals. But spoiler alert, there is a big difference. There is a giant difference between a human and an animal. Some people might say that the difference is the ability to think. But animals can think. If animals wouldn't be able to think, they wouldn't be able to do anything. Because in order to do anything, you need to think about doing it. Animals know when they want to eat. Animals know when they want to sleep. Because animals can think about it. Others might say that the difference is in understanding and thinking about some more complex concepts. But this is also not true. Bees can build some pretty neat stuff. Like bee houses, I don't know how you call this how, how you call them in English. But bees can build amazing stuff. Bees, bees can also dance in order to show, in order to communicate with other bees. So these are these are pretty complex concepts that bees can think of. So this is not complex thinking. So what differentiates the human and animal? I can tell you what. There is one single thing that is different between humans and animals. And this is the ability to question one's own thoughts. The ability to recognize one's own thinking. Basically self-awareness. But I'm not just talking about recognizing that you exist or recognizing yourself in the mirror. There is actually a mirror test that was conducted on some animals. Basically, scientists took some animals, made some, like, put some dots with markers or something on their faces. I mean, animals don't have faces. Well, on these animals. And show them their pictures, like, show them themselves in the mirror. Like, just gave them the mirror. And some monkeys, elephants, and dolphins, they can recognize themselves in the, in the mirror. They see that they have some dot on those themselves and they, can, they try to clean them. So animals also have some kind of self-awareness, at least some of them. So what the type, what's the type of self-awareness that differentiates humans and animals? It's not just any self-awareness. It's, just, it's not just being aware that you are alive. It's another type of self-awareness. It's it's the type of self-awareness. It means that you need... It's actually hard to say. So basically, the difference between humans and animals is the ability to think about one's own thinking. To question one's own thoughts. If an animal does something... It, it doesn't question why it did it. It doesn't think about doing it. It doesn't think about why it did it. It just does it. Unfortunately, self-awareness is not something every person is given at birth. It is a skill. And you have to develop this skill. And most people do not develop this skill, never. Never in this, never in their lives. They don't even try to develop it. A lot of people just honestly live like animals their whole life. They don't question what they do. They don't even know that they can question what they do. When they are angry, they are angry. When they are happy, they are happy. When they want to eat this junk food, they go and eat it. Without questioning why. Without questioning maybe it's not good for them. You probably know these people. They are all around the world. Most of them are. And also, no person is completely self-aware. There is no such a thing as complete self-awareness. It's just impossible. Not a single person in history was able to achieve that. And if one person will ever achieve that, he won't be just a person. He will be the superhuman. Literally. Not just top 1%, but the best ever. It doesn't mean, however, that we don't need to try to achieve that. 
It means that we need to be aware of that it's, it is impossible. But we need to try to go there, to get there. To be 100% self-aware. Or to be as self-aware as possible. As humanly possible. So where does self-awareness comes from? There are three parts of, our, of human brain. I mean three main parts of human brain. The first part is the oldest part. It's the what's so-called lizard brain. Basically what this means is that this part was so long in humans. It was so long in humans that it was even before the humans beca became humans. Like, yeah, maybe I said that pretty weirdly, but you get the idea. Before humans evolved to be humans, they had this part of their brain. This is the most animalistic part. This part is responsible for all human animalistic instincts. There are also the second part of human brain, which I don't remember how it's called, but th this is the mo this is the more newer newer part. And there is the third part, neocortex, the most newest part, most newest, yeah, the newest part. And so neocortex is responsible for self-awareness and for a lot of stuff that modern humans can do, for complex thinking, for problem solving, for attention. This is the most important part for modern humans. Modern part, uh, I mean, it's the most important part of the brain for modern humans. This part literally makes humans humans. So why do I think that self-awareness is the most important skill for humans? For self-improvement? And for, like, life in general? What I will say now, you may not understand it at first. But you will. You are not your brain. You are not your thoughts. You are not your desires. You are not your needs. This may be hard to understand without an example. So here is an example for you. Let's say you set yourself a goal to lose weight. But then you see some juicy, tasty hamburger. And you want to eat this. But you also want to lose weight. And you set a goal to lose weight. So where is your, where is you? And where is, where is your desire? And where is the desire of your, of not you, of something else? To eat a hamburger is a desire of your lizard brain. It's not your desire. If you get some, if you get such a thought, it doesn't mean it's your thought. It means your brain generated it for you. But again, as I said before, your brain is not you. You can set your goal. Setting a goal is a is something only a human can do. Not a not a single animal in the world can set goals. Only humans can set goals. Because again, in order to set goals, you need to be self-aware. Here's another example. You want to try cold showers. You know cold showers are good for you. You know they don't do anything bad for you, absolutely nothing bad will happen from cold showers. And so, here you are in the shower. You are ready to open the cold water. But you have a strong desire not to. This desire doesn't come from your neocortex. It comes from your lizard brain. Because your lizard brain, it wants, it always wants more comfort. It doesn't want to step out of the comfort zone. You need to be self-aware of these desires. Because these are, they are actually not yours. They are coming from your lizard brain. So these two examples I gave you are from the first stage of self-awareness. There are actually four stages. The first stage is your needs related to the body. Your desires related, related to your body. Like the desire to eat a hamburger, which is not good for you. But you still desire it. The desire to fap. The desire to... I don't know, like... Any desire related to your body. But how do you actually combat these desires? How do you improve this skill of self-awareness? In order to do this, you need to imagine that there is something that is always watching you. This something is not you. 
the something is not even actually there. But it is there. Just imagine that it is, it is there. And it's not judgmental. But it comments on every, your, on your every thought. Every single thing you think about. It comments on it. It recognizes your every desire. Like if you take some... If you see a hamburger that you want to eat. Why am I making these examples of hamburgers? Well, anyway. Imagine you want a hamburger. And you really want to eat it. And this something, it comments. Oh, see, his lizard brain tells him to eat this, this hamburger. That's how you need to imagine this. Like, just think about it, that it's always there. It's always watching. In order to remember about this, you may set some, like, alarms on your phone. Or put some sticky notes somewhere where you where you can see it so you are always reminded that something this something is watching you again not literally but imaginary and so your every thought every your action needs to be processed through this prism of something watching you when you ate some I know chocolate you then see this I know, you see this sticky note. It says, I'm watching you. And you think, why did they do that? Did they do this because my neocortex, which means, neocortex is literally you. So, which means, did they do this because I wanted to do this? Or because my lizard brain told me to? You always reflect on your actions. So, your bodily desires is the first step of self-awareness. What's the second step? The second step is your mental desires, is your mental actions. Like, let's say somebody stepped on your foot in Walmart, and you are all angry, you're getting angrier. You need to realize that your anger is not you, that your anger is, not, is given to you by your lizard brain, but not by your neocortex. You don't want to be angry, your anger is just a reaction of your brain. To the action that happened to you. So as you may already guessed, in the first stage you control your bodily needs, bodily desires, and in the second stage you control your emotions. The principle, the main, like, the main idea is the same. You just need to recognize that these uh, emotions that you feel, these are not actually your emotions. These are just the emotions of your brain, of your lizard brain. And basically you can decide whether you want to feel these emotions or you don't. You can just say, no, I don't want to feel anger. No, I don't want to feel happy or love. I don't want to feel anything. But you can, you can really decide. But in order to decide if you want to do this or not, you need to be self-aware. You need to be aware of this of that feeling this emotion is a choice. You need to be aware of that. If you are not aware of uh, you being able to choose whether to feel or not feel this emotion, then you will not be able to choose. Again, think from the prism of this imaginary creature that is watching you. Like if you're angry, this creature might say, oh, he's choosing to be angry. Or, oh, he's choosing to be happy. Oh, he's choosing to be, I don't know, whatever emotion you feel. The key word is choosing. You are choosing to feel some emotions. You can choose not to, but you can choose to feel it. So this is how you control your emotions. So what is the third stage of self-awareness? The third stage of self-awareness is uh, when you're ready... Can, when you can control your body completely, when you can control your emotions, and now you control your whole life, whole way of thinking, when you live not to possess some material possessions, possess material possessions, yeah, well, whatever, and um, you don't live for fulfilling your basic animalistic desires, but you live to create, to produce something. 
as a human supposed to live. At the third stage, you learn to control your motivation, your desire to do something, your curiosity. All of the stuff you can control too. You just need to be aware of that. Basically, stage three is just a combination of stage one and two, but on the more advanced level. That's what it is. And now stage four. Stage four is your ultimate goal. Stage four is an ultimate victory of your neocortex over your lizard brain. On stage four, you are almost, you're not almost, you're not almost completely self-aware because being completely self-aware is impossible. Is, yeah, as I said before, it's just impossible. But you are very close to that. You are aware of all of your desires that come from your lizard brain. You don't follow them. You don't. You live how a human is supposed to live. By creating stuff. By producing. At stage four, your body, your emotions, and your mind, it, it becomes not hard to just use them. It all becomes, it all starts working to your advantage. Working towards your goals. Your body becomes a tool, not a burden. Basically, you stop becoming a slave. You stop being a slave of your body. And using it. Using it productively. Using it to get something that you want. This is the power of self-awareness. I'll be completely honest with you. I'm not at stage 4 yet. I'm not even at stage 3. I'm between stage 2 and 3 right now. So I can force myself to um, not eat some food I want to eat. I realize that this is not my desires. That my goals are more important. And um, I can force myself to not feel some emotions I don't want to feel. Or to feel some emotions when I do want to feel them. It's not even hard for me anymore. But what is hard for me is to force myself to do something I don't want to do. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's easy. With cold showers, it's easy. I can do cold showers every day. My next video will be about cold showers. So I'm between stage two and three. Write in the comments what stage you are on. If, you, if this video was helpful, then also write in the comments how. It will be useful for some people. I hope so, at least. If you want to contact me personally, the link for my Instagram will be in the description. Thank you for watching, and I see you in the next one.